Hi, I'm Scott Russo. Uh, I am the Mount Sinai Professor of Affective Neuroscience and also the director of the newly launched Brain and Body Research Center. The Brain and Body Research Center is really one of the first of its kind in the nation to focus exclusively on the biological interactions between our brain and our body in both health and disease. Um, it represents a massive collaboration across basic science departments as well as clinical departments. And our goal is really to better understand a host of organic uh, physical illnesses as well as the interactions between our mental processes and those physical illnesses. So the importance of, of launching this Brain Body Research Center um, has to do a lot with our current and expanding understanding of how the brain and body interact in a whole host of, of physical illnesses. Um, we have oftentimes think of the brain as being somewhat separated from the physical body, um, and, and that that separation means that we should treat them separately when it comes to disease. Well, the Brain Body Research Center really strips away that fundamental um, thought process and considers the individual holistically. So we take a whole body approach to treating disease, and we believe that this whole body approach will really allow us to make fundamental progress in conquering a whole host of illnesses, um, not just brain illnesses, but also uh, physical illnesses as well. So there's a whole host of research institutes and centers, uh, both here at Mount Sinai and across uh, the United States, whose goal is really to better understand uh, mental processes. For example, there is uh, centers to, dedicated specifically to the treatment uh, of, of depression and anxiety. Uh, the, the research goals of those centers often take a brain-centric approach, meaning that they, func they, they fundamentally uh, target uh, the brain as the organ system that's dysfunctional. Here at the Brain Body Research Center, we think of the body more holistically. It's not just a problem with brain function, for example, but it's a problem on how the brain and the body may be communicating at any given time. So there are a, a host of strategies that we can take, uh, not only to heal our physical body, but, but in doing so, we can also heal the mind. So, you know, when I was a graduate student, I was taught that the brain was cordoned off from the rest of the body by something called the blood-brain barrier. This is a series of interconnected cells that essentially prevent or allow specific things from the body to get into the brain. Um, it was really thought back then that this blood-brain barrier was much more complete than it is. Now we know that the barrier is not so much a barrier, but it's actually a gatekeeper. So there's a lot of interactions between what's going on in the body and what's going on in the brain. But more recently, we found a, an additional source of brain-body connections. In fact, the brain sends these very complex network of, of nerves throughout the body. And these ne complex networks of nerves control all of your physical organ systems. So you can imagine if the brain and the mind are not healthy, then those physical organs are also not healthy. I think work at the center is already impacting uh, the way in which we think about disease and the way in which we treat disease. Um, in fact, the, despite the fact that this is a, a newly launched center, the reality is, is that the work that has gone into the conception of this center has been going on for, for more than a decade now. And some of our partners uh, in, in, in clinical psychiatry, for example, have launched clinical trials, testing new therapeutics that target uh, peripheral uh, uh, organ systems like the immune system, for example, as potentially new treatments for, for uh, depression and anxiety. We're also beginning to learn more about how controlling our stress levels can reduce the risk for cardiovascular disease. And we're starting to understand the fundamental mechanisms that are in place that allow that reduction in cardiovascular risk. So in fact, our research hopes to uh, launch uh, trials that allow us to then use that information uh, to, to reduce risk and, and ultimately conquer these really challenging and impactful diseases.